Hey friends, welcome to the channel. Should you still learn a language nowadays? Soon AI and machine translation will make that obsolete, right? Hasta la vista, baby. These are the topics we will talk about today. Los geht's. My name is Dustin. I'm an IT project manager from Germany. On this channel, we create content that helps us to be more productive, to learn new things, especially languages, and to live a happier and more fitting life. Today, we will look into if it still makes sense to learn a foreign language. Since it's a huge time commitment and we could do many other things, it just makes sense to ask ourselves why we are doing it and if it's worth it. Therefore, we first have a look at the history of machine translation since it has been invented. Further, we will review the available gadgets and tools of today, which can be used by regular folk like you and me. Then we will have a look at what's to come and last but not least, we will answer the question if it still makes sense to learn foreign languages. Okay, let's dive into today's topic. But first of all, a nice sip of coffee. Before we get into the history of machine translation, let's have a look at what the main challenges for them are. And the main thing is the context. So how a text is written and how it should be perceived and uh, to distinguish the nuances. This language is very complex. It's really hard to distinguish the context since the context is not just one thing, but there are many factors which influence it. First, who is the recipient? What cultural background does the recipient have and also the writer? Where does everybody come from? Which age do they have? Which occupation? And further, what the text is about and its underlying implications and subtopics. So what is written between the lines? And also we need to take into account concepts like sarcasm or irony or humor. So now let's have a look into the history of machine translation. It all started in the 50s with rule-based translations. This means that dictionaries and grammars are used to make a translation. But of course, this approach has its limitations. And this concept really struggles with the context. Then the next evolution step has been statistical machine translation, which started in the 90s and then evolved really in the 2000s. This means that you take bilingual texts and then generate statistical models based on that, which you then use to do your translations. And this approach also struggles to take into account the complexity of the context, but is already more advanced than the former approach and uh, definitely gives more accurate translations. Now state of the art is neural machine translation. And let me quickly quote Wikipedia here. Neural Machine Translation, NMT, is an approach to machine translation that uses an artificial neural network to predict the likelihood of a sequence of words, typically modeling entire sentences in a single integrated model. So we actually model an artificial neural network, which is yeah, inspired by the structure of our brain. And this approach has been largely popularized by Google in 2016 when they switched Google Translate to such a model. It's not just more accurate than the other approaches, but it also takes way less memory. And the whole technology is also evolving further. So we have, for example, highly specialized domain translations, which means that there are large quantities of data being gathered in a specific domain so that the translations can be really accurate. And this is especially interesting for large companies, like insurance companies or whatever to automate and to save money. Then we have also adaptive machine translation. And this is really interesting because it's like the name already says, adapts the translation while it's translating a text or a dialogue. So it will take the stuff into account that it has already translated for the upcoming sentence. So this really, yeah, is also taking into account context. They are earbuds for translations and those resemble airpods if you will and there are also specialized companies like for example time kettle they do exactly that and yeah you got two of them you put one in your ear the other one uh, into the ear of uh, the, one, the person you are talking to and then you start the app and you would just talk in your mother tongue and yeah the app would transcribe it and translate it and then the recipient would hear the translation in his earpiece and he could then or she could then reply and uh, the same spiel would happen again you would get the translation and uh, yeah immediately into your ear and this works quite well i've been really impressed how well actually 
I've seen a video about that by uh, Big Bong and uh, I'll also link it here. And uh, yeah, have a further look, it's really interesting. And there are also other companies like for example Google who offers something like that, um, the Google Pixel Buds, I think they are called. And um, yeah, those should also work in theory, but I think Time Kettle is way more specialized and probably a bit more accurate even than online meetings with real-time translation. So of course it's not speech translation in that case or in that sense, but it's transcribing what you are saying and then translating it. So it's like having a real-time conversation, but with subtitles, like if you're watching a series on Netflix or something. And I found that pretty impressive. I haven't tried it out yet, but I've stumbled a bit through the internet and I've read some stuff about that. And it looks quite interesting. So I could really imagine that this is the way going forward. Then there are also online translation tools like I've already mentioned uh, Google Translate, which has a huge variety of available languages and is not bad, but there's one translator I like even more, and that is DeepL. This translator also uses state-of-the-art technology and it has way fewer languages than uh, Google, for example, but especially in the European area, it has most of the, the available languages. And the translations are more accurate. Then there are also transcription services, so where you would send to an audio file and they would transcribe it and sometimes even translate it. Still, the majority of them operates with human translators, but there are more and more to come with machine transcriptions and also machine translations. And this will further lower the cost and can be really interesting. For example, there's a company called Trint, which are doing that and which support many languages. And I'm pretty excited about that because it will further lower the cost and will enable me to also get transcriptions for text that I could send them and which I could then um, use to learn a foreign language. And then of course, there are more and more languages to be translated, also smaller languages, and there's a project called No Language Left Behind by Meta. And they try to do exactly that. So to gather more material and more resources on smaller languages, and to also make the algorithms work with fewer resources. So first of all, stuff will evolve further. So everything I've just shown you will get better. There will be more languages available for translations. Um, context will be more in the focus. Also, there will be more accuracy with the translations. Uh, transcriptions will be more easy and cheaper. So yeah, everything will evolve slowly and will get better. AI will become at some point, and I'm pretty certain that this will happen, but I just don't know when, so powerful that it offers a real-time translation. And like in Star Trek, for example, with a universal translator. We use a device called the Universal Translator. It's like an alien dictionary with hundreds of languages programmed into it. And it can learn new languages very quickly, but it doesn't always work. So the necessity to learn a foreign language, to communicate with a different person will more and more diminish. But this is still in the future and we don't know when this will happen like to have like a really real-time translation which takes into account context and all the other stuff and which is comfortable to use and which is also cheap. There are still many obstacles which need to be overcome. Am I the only one who bothered to learn a foreign language? So then the question, is it still a good idea to learn foreign languages? First of all, it's a good exercise to train your brain to stay, yeah, fresh and young. Also, age doesn't prevent you from learning new languages. Just look at Steve Kaufman, for example. Then it will give you a better perspective on the world because you'll be able to understand different cultures and different points of view. You will become more tolerant. Then it's really good to connect to people on a deeper level because when they notice that you put in the effort to learn their language, they will perceive you differently. And also speaking in your mother tongue yeah, it's a different kind of emotion for the people. So it definitely does something. Then it's actually fun and can be a nice pastime. So yeah, it's just a great feeling to consume content in a foreign language and to exchange yourself with other people and to talk and chat and it can be awesome. Sometimes it can be also a drag, but in general, I would say, yeah, it's a really pleasant experience. It will build your confidence that you can actually do stuff and that you can learn stuff because 
sometimes and especially when we are not probably not that good at school like i've been for example it can be hard to find trust in yourself that you can actually yeah master something or learn something language is a great tool to do that so it's a great activity and when you notice that by spending enough time with a language and by doing your exercises and stuff you can learn something you can master something then we'll also recognize that this applies to other areas in life and it will have definitely positive effects on yeah your whole life then languages are an important part of our culture and they will also remain being that then it has never been so easy to learn a foreign language than nowadays with all the tools available and the internet and all the information at your fingertips. We can also talk to tutors from all around the world. You can even learn a language that doesn't get spoken in your area if you want to, if you are interested in that different culture. And then the day that AI becomes so powerful that it could really replace um, yeah, speaking for a language might be still very far away. We don't know that. So yes, if you ask me, learning foreign language is a great thing and you should definitely do it it will enrich your life i'm certain of it and then last but not least if you found the video useful please leave me a like and a subscription to the channel and do not miss anything going forward click on the notification bell thank you very much for watching and see you the next time